about marketing of uh, electronic communications and a lot of people get marketing and sales uh, confused. We'll talk a little bit about the difference. Again, this has got some great questions. We've got the four P's of marketing. It'll give us a great test question to come off of. I'll try to really hammer home in these lectures what the test questions will be, what they won't be. I'll go from that. Then we've got a little Steve Jobs video that's pretty old, 20 years old, but I think he's got some great marketing thoughts on there. And then it'll be interesting to watch that and compare Apple to where they are now, to where they were then, and then we'll be done for today. So the role of marketing, who's in charge of it, some basic marketing strategies, segmentation, positioning, branding, different types of advertising, terminology used in evaluating media advertising and how promotion is used uh, in marketing, the different types of promotion found in electronic media. So we're going to keep the sales part of it. So I've cruised to the sales part today. Uh, we won't have that today. We're just going to talk more about the marketing aspect of it. We talked about management skills. Again, remember everything we're talking about. It's a skill. Marketing is a skill. And one of the issues we have sometimes in marketing, uh, wherever you work, you'll, you'll find this out. Everyone thinks they understand marketing. And it's an easy area to complain about. It's an easy area to criticize if you don't understand it because you think you understand it because everyone watches television, everyone watches commercials, everyone knows what they like. So marketing, marketing can be thought of as the ability of organizations to serve consumers' needs and wants for specific products. I'll keep that up there again. It might be a good test question. This can be thought of as the ability of organizations to serve consumers' needs and wants for specific products. And we might go marketing, sales, et cetera, et cetera. Keep it, look at it again. We'll give it to you again. There, I'm highlighting right there. That might be two questions right there. Marketing is a management skill. True or false? True. Marketing can be thought of as ability or Put that the way that is there and give you some choices. A business that understands the importance of marketing has two related goals. You want to get new customers and you want to keep the ones you have. Most businesses cannot thrive just on their current customers, so they have to get new customers. Generating new customers is a goal of marketing. You want to bring people through the door and then again, you want to take care of the ones you already have. For successful marketing to occur, companies must be internally organized around common goals and objectives. Everyone needs to know which way the boat is supposed to be going. Everyone needs to be rowing in the same direction. Everyone needs to be understanding of what's happening, what you're trying to market. Here at Texas Tech, I talked about this before. Here at Texas Tech Athletics, we are, operate almost like an electronic media organization because we have a lot of the same goals. We have dual products. We have all these things. Right now, we're focused on one thing, 32,000 season tickets in football. It's our common goal. It's objectives. Everything we do, does it help us move the needle on 32,000 season tickets? That might be a test question just for listening to the video. What is the common goal right now at Texas Tech Athletics? Marketing efforts follow four things, product, price, place, and promotion. The four P's. Product, price, place, promotion. Product, price, place, promotion. <clears throat> I'll think of a fifth P. Put it in there in your test and say, which of these is not one of the P's of the four P's of marketing? Product, price, place, promotion. Those are your four P's. Those four things. Product. is the actual good produced for customers as well as packaging the product. Again, we think of it a little differently. Texas Tech puts a product on the field. We put a football team or a basketball team or a baseball team on the field. But then we have a product that's a ticket, the actual ticket that you have in your hand. That's the product, whatever it is. You're selling Reese's peanut butter cups, the actual peanut butter cups, and those great orange things that they have. Here, look, I love this piece tea. That's the product. And there's the packaging. I drink this all the time. Love it. Peace tea. Not peach tea. It's tea and lemonade, also known as an oral palm. It's the product. <coughs> price impacts the sale of the product and affects competitors who consider what price to charge in light of other prices available in the market. Going back to this piece T. Right here, I'm trying to see if I get anything else on my desk that would be product. Get it for like 99 cents a can. If it's a dollar ninety-nine, I might not get it. I might look at another 
type of product like this. But at 99 cents, heck yeah. Give me as many of those as possible. That's the price. It impacts the sale of the product. And again, if I'm going to get into this market, I'm going to sell these, whatever this is, 23 ounces of tea, 80 calories per 12 fluid ounces. <coughs> I need to decide. Am I going to charge more than these guys here at Peace Tea? I need to decide the price. So if you're selling advertising, for example, what's your competitor selling it for? If you're selling a subscription to a website, what's your competitor selling for? Price determines how you make money. Place is a physical location which the product is actually sold and the steps taken to distribute the product. How do I get that? That's sold at the grocery store, at the convenience store. I could go online probably and get it. Um, physical location, how you get it. Is that your website? <laughs> is that wherever? That's the actual place. And the promotion is the activities that promote both awareness among the consumers and the actual selling of the product. And that includes advertising. Part of your promotional campaign is advertising. <coughs> My bronchitis is holding on, won't let go. So again, look at that. Product, what the actual product is, price, what you're charging for it, what you're paying for it. Again, because we know all of us are trying to make money. Place, the actual location where the transaction takes place. And promotion, how are you letting people know about it? How are you creating awareness? I want to leave that up there longer so you look at that again. All of these, just ripe with test questions. Most marketing tasks are coordinated across two units. You have sales, you have promotions. All right, a manager supervises the sales department, which serves primarily to market the station to potential advertising clients at local, regional, and national levels. We'll talk tomorrow about different kinds of sales managers, but a manager oversees the entire department. Manager supervises a promotions or creative department. And again, this, like everything else we've talked about, the size of that varies with the size of the market. If you're in a station in Lubbock, if you're stationed in Lubbock, you're going to have a smaller staff. It's just part of the deal. So there's management everywhere. And the promotional staffs in recent years have increased with the emergence of the internet as a marketing tool. Now you see social media directors. You see people in charge of internet marketing, those things. So that increases your, your staff. Keeping that up there a little longer for you to look at. The sales and promotions departments are interdependent. It means they work on their own but they work together to benefit your organization. So you have a sales team, you have a promotions team. They cross over, but they also work on their own. And then marketing involves a wide range of managerial responsibilities, include strategic planning, targeting of specific audiences, design of your advertising and promotional campaigns, and extending the brand. What's your brand? How are you going to get that word out to people? So marketing involves all of those things. I'll leave that up there again a little bit longer. Again, I'm trying to uh, fix what we had with the four test grades this time. Marketing is described as a form of warfare, which requires participants to recognize opponent strengths and weaknesses in order to successfully exploit or defend against them. You should know when you're selling against another station or something what's good about their station what's bad about their station what do you do better than what they do what do they do better than what you do you need to know inside and out about your opponents just like in athletics right when you play a team you know hey they're good at this they're not good at this we can exploit them here you need to be worried about this marketing can be described as that and the same thing your own strengths and weaknesses. You know going in, hey, I'm not good at this. 
So I need to make up for that. You know, you don't have programming that necessarily is good for women. But you have other programming. So you play on your strengths and you downplay your weaknesses. Generally, successful marketing is a product of carefully planned strategies. No one really stumbles in to a great marketing plan or idea. You need to be strategic. I'll show you a little bit of uh, one of our plans here in athletics. Some common strategies that are used by business to market their products, segmentation, positioning, and there's that word again, branding. So most companies, that's common amongst companies, segment your market how you're going to position yourself, and how are you going to extend the organizational brand. We talked about it before. Brand. Branding is so important. Segmentation. To identify segments of the market not currently served and develop products to meet their needs. So if you said, hey, I'm going to start a website. I'm going to make money at it. What's out there that needs to be developed? You see this with apps all the time, right? I'm going to create this app that is not being currently served and I'm going to develop that app and people are going to buy it. Segmentation, understanding the segments of the market. To be effective, the segment must be measurable, large enough to be profitable and reachable. Be great if you're saying, hey, I'm going to sell coolers to Eskimos in Alaska. Now, you can make the argument, is that measurable? Yes, probably. Is it large enough to be profitable? Probably. Is it reachable? For you here in Lubbock, Texas, if they don't have internet, you can't fulfill your orders and things like that. It's not. You have to decide all these things to be effective. Database marketing has obviously refined segmentation strategies. Database marketing involves building files of information on audience members and then accessing the information as different needs warrant. So we have, we have a database of over 200,000 names that we pick and choose who we're going to mail to. Hey, we're going to mail to e an email. We're going to email this segment of the market. We're going to do this for this segment of the market and try to involve them on a certain level. Positioning, presenting the products to consumers in a clear manner. Positioning builds on a clear identity or your brand in the marketplace and establishes differences from competitors. We talked a lot about radio and television. How do they position radio? It's by our times talent and hey, we've got this morning show. We do this. Um, one uh, 97.3 here radio station positions themselves. They are the flagship station for Texas Tech Athletics. What is it that identifies your brand? Positioning electronic media requires an objective analysis of many factors. The market, number of competitors, their marketing strategies and analysis in all areas of the station or your system operation. Again, knowing your strengths, knowing your weaknesses, knowing that with your competitors, how you're going to position yourself in the market, who are you competing against? Branding different, differentiates products, goods, services in the marketplace. There's tangible and intangible values that work together to create an image of a product in the mind of the consumer. Do you just want to get detergent or do you want to get Tide or Cheer or somebody that you see all the time and their brand is marked in your mind? That's better than just detergent, right? You want to get the, you want to, you want to do those things. You want to get the ones you've talked about. And brand is influenced by many factors. The product, the packaging, the name. There used to be a, uh, Johnson & Johnson, when they had Tylenol, Tylenol, there was a disgruntled employee who poisoned some Tylenol. All of a sudden, that name, for the longest time, there was a negative connotation with it because people worried about it. We talked about price. How is it advertised and promoted? How is it getting out the door? What are other areas of marketing and branding strategies? At Texas Tech, we look at the brand as the double T. How do people see that double T? How is it packaged? Do we go old school double T, which is flat? Do we go new school double T, which is the 3D look? All those things go into our strategies. Our brand image is influenced a lot by what we're charging for tickets. What are, how are we promoting it? All those things play a part. Again, we're talking about electronic media and those operations, but 
it's affected for and it's it's fits in for any different business you have and to establish your brand image all these aspects must work together if you've got a great product but the price is way out of line it doesn't work if you've got a great product but it looks horrible the packaging looks horrible doesn't work if you're not advertising it you're not promoting it doesn't work hard to get your method of distribution makes it difficult they all have to work together and again there is a difference between sales and marketing marketing is building the brand doing all those things sales is basically going out and selling the product so the competition for audience has grown electronic media firms have recognized the need to emphasize marketing to attract advertising so that's why you want to understand the difference between sales and marketing marketing is a whole separate animal than sales you got a sales team that goes out and is saying I've got a product to sell I've got advertising time to sell the marketing department is meanwhile is creating your brand image and keeping your brand out there all those things to maintain a competitive position broadcasters had to adjust because of competition and shift from just sales going hey I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna sell this to you you're gonna buy it or not buy it to more of a marketing oriented philosophy where hey how does this fit in with your company how does this fit in with what you're trying to do does our brand and your brand go together it's just because there's so many options now there's so many options for television advertising there's so many options for online advertising there's fewer and fewer options for print advertising so you have to learn to market and sell we talked about these groups before but advertising and television all and cable and internet all have their own advertising bureaus that if you are a part of that if you're in a radio station and you say gosh I need help with advertising you talk to the RAB and they can make sure they have all the information for you you want to do this you want to do that you want to sell this way we're gonna provide you some advertising that's just gonna talk about the greatness of radio advertising you hear it all the time you're driving along you hear an ad talking about how great radio is you're listening to radio and you're thinking hey that's right this it is reaching me produced by RAB and again this is more of a sales technique we'll talk more about sales uh, in tomorrow's class sales oriented approach selling advertising time and we'll talk about that later so now we're getting into all the, the sales aspect and so we'll talk more about these in our class tomorrow but I did want to talk about um, Steve Jobs probably the best there is right at marketing Apple and marketing and this is an old video but think of how some of the things he talks about are still relevant today so let's take a look at Steve Jobs talking about Apple and again this was in 1997 the audio is not great but the there are subtitles and the message is what we want to pay attention to. For me, marketing is about value. This is a very complicated world. It's a very noisy world. And we're not going to get a chance to get people to remember much about us. No company. And so we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us. Now, Apple, fortunately, is one of the half a dozen best brands in the whole world. Right up there with Nike, Disney, Coke, Sony. It is one of the greats of the greats. Not just in this country, but all around the globe. And, but, but, but even a great brand needs investment in caring. If it's going to retain its relevance and vitality. And the Apple brand has clearly suffered from neglect in this area in the last year. And we need to bring it back. The way to do that is not to talk about speed and beat. It's not to talk about myths and negatives. It's not to talk about why we're better than women. The very industry tried for 20 years to convince me that milk was good for you. It's a lie, but they tried anyway. And the sales are going like this. 
And then they tried Got Milk and the sales are going like this. Got Milk is an entire other part, and I think the focus is on the absence of the product. <laughs> but, but, but the best example of all, and, and one of the greatest jobs of, of marketing in milk that the universe has ever seen is Nike. Remember, Nike sells a commodity. They sell shoes. And yet, when you think of Nike, you feel something different than you see And their ads, as you know, they don't ever talk about the product. They don't ever tell you about the air flows and why they're better than Reebok's air flows. Where's Nike doing the other side? They honor great athletes and they honor great athletes. That's who they are. That's what they are about. Apple spends a fortune on advertising. You never know. You never know. So when I got here, we, Apple just fired their agency. We were in a competition with 23 agencies that you know, four years from now was just one. And we blew that up and we, we hired Shai Play, the ad agency that I was fortunate enough to work with years ago. We created some award winning work, including the, the commercial vote of the best ad ever made in 1984 by advertising for that point. And um, we started working about eight weeks ago. And what was the question we asked was our customers want to know who is Apple and what is it that we can do? Where do we fit in this world? And then, what we're about isn't making boxes for people to get their jobs, although we do that well. We do that better than almost anybody in some cases. But Apple's about something more than that. Apple, at the core, its core value is that we believe that people with passion can change the world for them. That's what we believe. And we've had the opportunity to work with people like that. We've had an opportunity to work with people like me, with software developers, with customers who have done it in some big and some small way. And we believe that in this world, people can change it for the better. And that those people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that actually can. And so what we're going to do in our first brand marketing campaign in several years is to, is to get back to that core value. A lot of things have changed. So the market's a totally different place than it was a decade ago. And Apple's totally different. Apple's place in it is totally different. And believe me, the product and the distribution strategy and the manufacturing are totally different. We understand that. But values and core values, those things shouldn't change. The thing is, that Apple believes in at its core are the same things that Apple believes in in And so we wanted to find a way to communicate that. And what we have is something that I am um, I'm very moved by. It honors those people who have seen it. Some of them are living, some of them are not. But the ones that aren't, like you'll see, you know that if they ever used the computer, it would have been wrong. The theme of the campaign is to think different. It's the people honoring the people who think different and who move this world forward. And it really is what we are about. It touches the soul of this company. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it. Uh, and I hope that you feel the same way about it. Here's to the crazy one. The misfits, the rebels, the trouble. Round pegs in a square hole. One who can get. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. Now, the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while 
why some may see them as the crazy ones. They see Jesus. It's the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So good stuff there. And again, I love that. Then be crazy, think differently, and we'll talk about that near the end of our uh, of our class as we go through the end of the class. Um, there's some rules for life heading forward. But again, they've been pretty good at Apple about what they're uh, about what they've been doing, and so we're going to keep that uh, moving forward. So uh, again, I'm going to take a look at the test. By the time you you see this, everything. Uh, should be changed on your grades. Uh, hopefully you watch this. Go to the message board and write something. We'll have another assignment, written assignment this week. But uh, besides that, we are all done. So thank you very much.